Okay, we will continue X-Men The Real Origins. This is, without question, one of my favorite books. The Bible is a great book. This is one of my favorite books. This is about no question. The Book of Jasher is one of my favorite books, hands down. All right. We'll continue uh, in chapter 38 of the great book of Jasher. We're on verse, um, I believe we're on verse 20. Five. Yeah. So read along with me. Jasher chapter 38 verse 25. And the sons of Jacob came and sought the way into the city and could not find it. And the inhabitants of the city went up to the top of the wall and saw and behold, the sons of Jacob were seeking an entrance into the city. So now these sons of Jacob, man, they were relentless. They had these powers. They were not going to stop until they killed until they smashed everybody and the inhabitants of the city reproached the sons of Jacob from the top of the wall and they cursed them <laughs> calling them all kinds of names and the sons of Jacob heard the reproaches and they were greatly incensed and their anger burned within them like you don't say this to the to we Hebrews man who you think you are man we gonna get you and the sons of Jacob were provoked at them and they all rose and sprang over the rampart with the force of their strength and through their might past the 40 cubit breadth of the ramp. That's 57 feet of the ramp. That is a Hulk type leap, ladies and gentlemen. That is a Hulk type leap. They're saying they built that for no one to enter or go in. They leaped over this rampart. And when they had passed the rampart, they stood under the wall of the city. Remember, that's 74 feet high. And they found all the gates of the city enclosed with iron doors. And the sons of Jacob came near to break open the doors of the gates of the city. And the inhabitants did not let them. For from the top of the wall, they were casting stones and arrows upon them. Just like in the movies that you see. The dumping hot molten uh, molten whatever on them or throwing stones down upon them this is where they get this from ladies and gentlemen and the number of the people that were upon the wall was about 400 men and when the sons of Jacob saw that the men of the city would not let them open the gates of the city they sprang and ascended the top remember this wall is 74 feet high and ascended the top of the wall and Judah went up first to the east part of the city we see that Judah is the leader he is the reign leader of these Hebrews and Gad and Asher went up after him to the west corner of the city and Simeon and Levi to the north and Dan and Reuben to the south and the men who were on the top of the wall the inhabitants of the city Seeing that the sons of Jacob were coming up to them, they all fled from the wall, descended into the city, and concealed themselves in the midst of the city. They scared, man. If you see somebody just hop 74 feet or 64, however many feet, they just hopped in the air, and they coming at you, you're going to hop up too, man. That is incredible. And Ishakar and Nephtali that remained under the wall approached and broke the gates of the city. They broke the gates. Remember, they, they had iron doors. And kindled a fire at the gates of the city that the iron melted. And all the sons of Jacob came into the city, they and all their men, and they fought with the inhabitants of the city of Sartan and smote them with the edge of the sword and no man stood up before them and about 200 men fled from the city and they all went and hid themselves in a certain tower in the city and Judah pursued them to the tower and he broke down the tower that's Hulk smash type power which fell upon the men they all died he smashed the tower they crushed the people and the sons of Jacob went up the road of the roof of that tower. And they saw, and behold, there was another strong and high tower at a distance in the city. 
and the top of it reached to heaven. Why do you need something that big? Because there were giants that was living amongst them, man. The sons of Jacob hastened and descended and went with all their men to that tower and found it filled with about 300 men, women, and little ones. And the sons of Jacob smote a great smiting amongst those men in the tower, and they ran away and fled from them. And Simeon and Levi pursued them with twelve mighty and valiant men came out to them from the place where they had concealed themselves. And I'm sure that they are mighty men. They was probably good board. They was probably their stature was probably big. They was probably tall. And those twelve men maintained a strong battle against Simeon and Levi. So they had to be some giant. They couldn't be regular men. But these dudes have superpowers, man. And Simeon and Levi could not and they could not prevail. So these were giants over them and those valiant men broke the shields of Simeon and Levi and one of them struck at Levi's head with his sword when Levi hastily placed his hand to his head for he was afraid of the sword and the sword struck Levi's hand and it wanted but little to the hand of Levi being cut off it almost cut Levi almost had his hand cut off although they were super powered they were still they were still mortal we were still flesh but, the, but Yah has given them these superpowers. It's unbelievable. And Levi seized the sword of the valiant man in his hand and took it forcibly from the man. And with it, he struck at the head of the powerful man and he severed his head. This was a powerful man. He severed his hand, Levi. And 11 men approached to fight with Levi for they saw that one of them was killed. And the sons of Jacob fought, but the sons of Jacob could not prevail. These were giants, man, I'm telling you. They had these super powers, but they couldn't prevail over these giants. For those men were very powerful. And the sons of Jacob, seeing that they could not prevail over them, Simeon gave a loud and tremendous shriek. And the eleven powerful men were stunned at the voice of Simeon shrieking like the uh, comic character Banshee. It was a shriek they had never heard. It was a shrieking noise. And Judah at a distance knew the voice of Simeon shouting. And Naphtali and Judah ran with their shields to Simeon and Levi. And found them fighting with those powerful men. Unable to prevail over them as their shields were broken. These were giant men that they were fighting. And Naphtali saw that the shields of Simeon and Levi were broken. And he took two shields from his servants and brought them to Simeon and Levi. And Simeon, Levi, and Judah, the four brothers, on that day fought all three against the eleven mighty men until the time of sunset. So these were no doubt regular humans. These were men of stature. But they could not, and they still could not prevail over them. So these were definitely not regular humans they were fighting and this was told unto Jacob and he was sorely grieved and he prayed unto Yah and he and Naphtali his son went against these mighty men and Jacob approached and drew his bow and came nigh unto the mighty men and slew three of their men with the bow so even though they're giants they could be killed just like I said just like in Lord of the Rings giants can be killed just like in three th 300 Giants can be killed. And slew three of them men with the bow. And the remaining eight turned back. And behold, the war waged against them in the front and rear. And they were greatly afraid for their lives. And could not stand before the sons of Jacob. And they fled from before them. And in their flight they met Dan and Asher coming toward them. And they suddenly fell upon them and fought with them. And slew two of them. And Judah and his brothers pursued them, and smote the remainder of them, and slew them. And all the sons of Jacob returned and walked about the city, searching if they could find any men. And they found about twenty young men in a cave in the city. And Gad and Asher smote them all. And Dan and Naphtali lighted up the rest of the men who had fled and escaped from the second tower, and they smote them all. So we're going to stop right there, man. That is undoubtedly 
one of the best reads I have read. And to know that this truly happened, this is like not fictional. To know that this truly happened is amazing. It's absolutely amazing. And I hope you guys will find this to be a good read too. I'll catch you on the next one. Shalom.